Okay, uh, Radio Woomera, Combat Wombat. Um, yeah, there's two bits to Radio Woomera, part one and part two. And yeah, there's a lot of stories to this song, actually. Um, it's quite an epic and really sort of um, signals a really kind of big movement that was happening at the time with uh, a lot of um, our detention centers that were held out in the middle of the desert. Um, one of them named Woomera. Yeah, Australia had been up to its usual tricks, um, putting um, innocent refugees, asylum seekers, in prison in the middle of the desert um, where they thought no one would see or hear them. But we heard the call and there was a mass mobilisation um, at uh, to Woomera, which was the detention centre, um, or where the detention centre was. Uh, Woomera was originally like a military base, rocket range, um, and had since then been converted into a, a place where the government could try and hide refugees out of sight, out of mind. Um, there have been people locked up in indefinite detention for, you know, six, seven, eight years, and yeah, no real access to lawyers or services. There was kids in there, there was families in there. so. There was a, a big call out for everyone to head out to the desert and, you know, we were quite familiar with that part of the world after hanging out in that area with Uncle Kevin and walking through that country with the camels and, and doing all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, good to get back out on the, the old turf. Um, and I remember the morning the fences came down and, yeah, we didn't predict that to happen um, at all. You know, people climbed up. Um, the fences and they just bent. It looked like spaghetti. I remember just looking at it just bending over under the weight of people climbing on the fence and next thing you know the fences were down and people were heading straight over um, to where the refugees were and they um, managed to get across the razor wire and like lever a bit of the fence open and next thing you know people were jumping out um, and making a run for it and I think none of us had really expected that to happen. <laughs> And was a really, um, yeah, kind of phenomenal, emotional and revolutionary moment to show that actually, yeah, people power can pull down fences, literally, in front of our eyes, bending like, um, yeah, half quick spaghetti. Yeah, the first part of Radio Woomera is, is Izzy uh, arguing with a radio, shock jock radio guy oh my goodness i can't remember his name now maybe easy can clarify that one but that was recorded because we had this awesome friend called technic who lived in adelaide and he was obsessed with recording uh talk back radio and he had recorded every single news program on the tv and every single talk back radio station f on radio from as far back as the Gulf War. And he had a house that was incredible, that was literally just videotapes and tapes and CDs mounted up the walls. He had like something like 300 TVs and yeah, that's a whole other story, the amazing Technic. So Technic, you know, was like really in charge of um, scanning the airwaves and he was kind of like my personal sample gatherer. And luckily for us, uh, he'd organized with his to record uh, this interview that she had live to air uh, with the shock jock radio guy from uh, from Adelaide. A305 1323, now Izzy. Is it Izzy or Lizzie? Izzy. Izzy? Yeah. yeah. What That's is Izzy one. short for? Um, for Isabella. Isabella, it's a lovely name. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was just bringing up Ed, um, in reference to a caller that called quite a while back uh, referring to Woomera. Yes. And um, I was actually there working as an independent journalist um, through a community television station from Melbourne. Well, and you, you... the fact that it got out of control is due to pure emotion of people um, so desperate that um, they were prepared to do anything for their freedom. Yeah, well, bugger them. Let them not be there. Well, <laughs> that's easier said than done. If your home was being bombed by... NATO by America, if you lived in a village and your children... You're, and very, your you're, a, very, you're a very left-wing lady, aren't you? 
I'm, I'm just a human. I don't characterize myself as left wing or white wing. All I know is I care about other human beings and I don't believe they should be incarcerated just because they want to live and want to have freedom. Well, you let those people into our community and you'll have a million on your doorstep overnight. Who are you? Are you not a boat person? Did your parents not come by plane or boat? No, Unless you're yes. an Aboriginal person, Absolutely. you are a boat person as well. This is my point. This is the point the I've always made. The fact you might not be black, the fact you might not be Arab, that's just a racist... That's just a racist thing if you think they're any different from you. Izzy, what I'm saying to you is this. This is our country. It is not their country. We this have is Aboriginal a... land, man. You just this is what? not Aboriginal land. Do you yeah, know what it, happened? It, it was Aboriginal land long before you he got here, any of your family got here, anyone you know got here. This is Aboriginal land first. Izzy, do you and know what white happened? And came next. And the fact if you're Arab, Asian, white, doesn't matter. You're all people. So what can yeah. we think? The radio interview at the start of um, Radio Umrah is actually an interview with myself and Jeremy Cordeaux. Um, it was Talkback Radio, and it was recorded by um, the the one and only Technic, who um, records, you know, everything that the Evil Shock Jocks are up to, um, hopefully to um, use against them when their day comes. And it was just, I literally just got back from the desert and was staying at his house in Adelaide, when he said Jeremy Cordo's on the radio and they're talking about Umrah and the callers before me had said stuff like, you know, round up those hippies and cut them off the doll. Why don't you get a net catcher and like, or why don't you just shoot them and you know, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, they certainly a response was needed and that was just a small slither of the, the conversation that had prevailed and Surprisingly, he actually let me stay on air for quite some time while we, um, you know, discussed the issues and he exposed himself uh, once again to be a racist, um, bigoted shock jock and so made a, a great sample <laughs> for Radio Woomera. Yeah, the second section, Radio Woomera Part 2, is... I uh, wrote the song actually on my old Emu SB12... Hundred, that one. Yeah, my old, uh, my old Emu drum machine, and you know it's an interesting song because you know I don't want to give too much away. I know there will be a story about this one day down the track, I'd say. But um, you know we have Izzy and Elf, of course, doing their whole um, their whole raps over the beat, but then in the middle of the section, um, it sort of drops into an interview which myself and a friend did uh, after there was um, a breakout at Woomera. And the interview that you're hearing is with these incredible young boys called the Bakhtari Boys. And there were two brothers and uh, they'd been stuck in Woomera. And um, they were just highly intelligent, really switched on young kids, um, maybe 12 and 14 years old. They were young. Um, they were actually one of the reasons why uh, a lot of those refugees out in the Woomera Baxter area talked English because they learned English by watching TV and because they'd been locked up for so long and they were literally learned it from the TV. And then they taught everybody else. And um, yeah, man, that's just them telling the story. Um, I was doing the interview. Um, yeah, what can I say, man? It's... it's um, it's a powerful interview and it's really terrible at the same time because um, those, those young guys were going through some serious stuff along with the, all the other refugees you know, come, who come from Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq. Um, yeah, so it, it, was, it was really crazy. Yeah, everybody that um, you know, <laughs> found themselves accidentally partaking in the breakout um, yeah, has got their own story to tell. It was a crazy night and a few days and weeks that followed. Um, everyone heading off in different directions and hiding people and on the run and some people being busted and some people escaping and and yeah, there's <laughs> certainly there's probably a few books and movies in that um, that chapter alone. And um, you know, we hid in the creek bed and ate kangaroo and <laughs> some people drank vodka for the first time and and yeah, it was we were on the edge and we were out there and you know, people were looking for us but there was a feeling of 
yeah, probably the, the first kind of sense of freedom that the people that have been locked up there had for a long time. In the middle of the song, there is a um, also an interview with two of the boys that escaped um, from the detention centre. They were actually the first people through the fence. Yeah, the story of the Bakhtari brothers is, is really heartbreaking. You know, they, they were just young kids and they'd, you know, witnessed so much already. And in the interview, you can hear them talking about how, you know, they don't go to school in there. All they learn is bad things, how to, to drink shampoo and to try and kill yourself. And that's pretty heavy when you hear that come out of the mouth, um, you know, mouths of child, children. And and they were staunch, you know, and they, they made it all the way to Melbourne. Um, but unfortunately... Uh, someone decided to drop them off at the British consulate and told them to claim asylum and by the time we got we were back in the desert um, we saw the newspaper article um, of them being arrested at the consulate and yeah flown back to Woomera which was devastating and it still haunts me you know wondering what happened to those kids my name is Montazir what do you think of the of your experience in the Woomera Detention Centre? It is very horrible for children and families, for single men also, and there is no no education and activities, and everyone get crazy there because of that we escaped. We was very tired and very fed up of the fans. Fences everywhere from SM, Dima. Two times I killed myself by razor, and two times I suicide me. Then they took me. They were throwing in the camp. So everyone get crazy. I was not working and we cannot breathe. And children and little boys. They the smoke go in the eyes in the when they breathe it is very bad for their lungs. The tear gas containers. Yes. I am very happy to be free. I want to go to school, read and learn English. In Kim we uh, we didn't learn English, we learn too many bad things. We learn how to how to cut themselves, how to drink shampoo, how to suicide. This and when we get out of now we are free 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 you know what happened out at Woomera I think is a story worth remembering because right now the Australian government is still locking people up in indefinite detention um, offshore detention and also right here in Melbourne at Mida at um, you know the different hotels, Mantra Hotel, Kangaroo Point. Recently, the airways are still full of redneck uh, shock jocks, and you know you just have to listen to the government um, and the media, and you know what what they're saying about asylum seekers and refugees and immigrants and the way they're being treated right now. Um, yeah, things certainly aren't improving, and these issues. Are real. These are people's lives that they're using for their own political gain, and you know, people have already died in detention. People have died in offshore detention. People have committed suicide in detention here in Australia, and it's completely unnecessary. It's an unnecessary evil. To so don't stop. We won't stop. We can't stop. Whole lot of people are right wait now. Whole lot of people are right wait now. Incarcerate, gate, penetrate, blow. Knock down the fence, break sound the facts loud. Pick up a crowd with a vow not to bow down. To predicament, implemented on the innocent. With intent, evident to better the plight. Spoiled by our government, impotent to ever see in the light. Interested only in money that's feeding the right. Wing of a vulture culture, killing them too. You'll ever see now is in the zoo With the nature of man seeming damned to follow suit Tell me how long do them come to cage you Rip 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 Refugee Rip 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 Rip
For me, the last thing I heard, they had ended up in community detention and then had been whisked away on Christmas Day um, back to Pakistan. So, you know, I don't know what happened to them after that, but there's always, you know, a piece of my heart and mind that, that really wonders, um, yeah, what, what became of the Bakhtari brothers and, yeah, a heartbreaking story that can, you know, really haunt you. Um, and, you know, you've, you've met those kids and seen those kids and just know the hell that um, the Australian government put them through and, like, what for? For, for nothing. But, yeah, Radio Woomera, um, yeah, just a real moment in time. You know, there was a lot of, um, there was a couple of breakouts in that area. A lot of, uh, sorry, a lot of Australian activists felt really strongly about um, a lot of these people being locked up for extended periods of time in the middle of nowhere with literally no rights. This song is, you know, nearly 18 years old and unfortunately um, still relevant. But I think the thing to take from that is, yes, you can pull down a fence. Yes, you can set people free. And yes, you can tell the government that this is not on and you can take physical direct action to make that happen. And um, we have more power than we think. Yeah, Radio Woomera.